I heard you talk about the science of being a woman. Yes, ma'am. I heard I it. She know, said, I heard you talk about the science of being a woman. Yes, ma'am. And as someone who grew up who didn't have that training, how can we do more? Because this is really a subject that touches my heart. How can we do more in this city to promote the science of being a woman when it's not popular to be the soft-spoken woman, to be the supportive woman? How can we do more of that? See, everything, thank you, sister. Did you hear her yes. question? Yes. Everything starts with knowledge, knowing. You couldn't know the science of being a woman if you were never taught. And you have to know that the slave master that brought our fathers into slavery was not interested in producing out of slavery a woman that could be the source of the freedom of her people. So when you see Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, and these great black women, these were not something prepared by the enemy. These were people prepared by God to lift us to different heights. Now, I'm going to say what the science is. Now, those of you who study the Bible, you think that a woman was created from the rib of a man and therefore she's bent and crooked <laughs> and some silly people pastors preach this to put women down because once you put a woman down you can't get up because it is only through a woman that we are lifted. Right. Now let's go back to that Bible and get the science. Look at your Bible. I don't have mine with me, but you go home and check it. In the 26th uh, verse of the first chapter of Genesis, God says, let us, us, us. See, there was a us in this. Make man in our image and after our likeness. Why us? Because you can't make a man by yourself. Mm. So the Bible says, go back and look, male and female created he them and call their name Adam, fifth chapter of Genesis. Now, if man and woman, not man alone, man and woman are created in the image and likeness of God, then male is the male aspect of God. And the female is the female aspect of God mm. and together the two as one if they are one in God mm -hmm. then they produce from the womb gods mm. right. so David the psalmist says ye are all gods children of the most high God now, sister, do you have children? No, sir. None yet. May God bless you soon with the right man. I'm married. Sir. Amen. 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 <laughs> sir, may I add, he is sitting. You, you have to pardon me. I just enjoy what I do. <laughs> but, but listen, now this is very important. Sister, you do not create life. You are an agent of creation. Man does not create life. There's only one life giver. One. And that is God. But the male sperm and the female ovum are the agents 
of his creativity. So when a man and a woman come together, now just look at this. Allah says in the Quran, I use no us. I created you in the womb. So the womb of a woman is God's workshop. Ooh, you better listen. See, when little girls know who they are from birth, not just I am a genius, genius is a punk word. I am God. I'm not the most high God, but I am a God that I can think and will something into existence like God does. The brain of man and woman is infinite. Yes, sir. I created you in the womb. So the womb is where God works. That's why Elijah Muhammad taught us that when that sister is pregnant, that's a time of no foolishness. You don't put a lot of madness around her. It's like a cake that's in the oven. Grandma would tell you, don't stomp in the kitchen. The cake will fall down. You remember that? Yes, sir, I remember that. That's right. Well, she baking something. And she'll mark what she's producing by the circumstances that surround her pregnancy. The vaginal tract of the female is the channel to God's workshop. That's why he puts a tissue there that you can't get to the workshop until you break the hymen and blood issues. This is not a play thing for man. Go ahead, go ahead. It's a channel that is sacred. And no woman who knows herself will allow any man access to God's workshop with a stupid idea of foolishness in his mind. You don't lay down with no man that ain't got no damn sense. <laughs> I don't care how cute he looks. You better make sure he's a BMW. <laughs> he's a black man working. He's a He's a black man that got something on the ball. Because sisters, you ain't got time for foolishness. Because once you start producing children, and you see him walk out the door, and you are left with his offspring, his future, in your hands, and he's beat you, he's mistreated you, but that's his seed. You can start hating him by looking at him. Look just like your no good damn father. He was a worthless bum, let me tell you. And some women will talk like that to the child of a bum. And she'll put hatred in that child for the man whose sperm was used by God to create this life, but you're mocking it in the womb. See, the rebellion of Eve mocked the offspring. That's why she would have her children in pain. And that's why our children bring us so much pain today, because we don't know our purpose in life. We think our purpose is just to have fun and, and uh, we think that real beauty is booty. So women today 
feel that their stock and trade is in this and this. So if you got a pretty form, you want men to see it. So they dress you so that boobs and butt are in men's face. And what you see is what you get. Because you attracted a man to yourself at the lowest state. So don't expect a high-minded man when you've pulled off your clothes to show him what nature put in a place where it could be hidden. We need teaching, brothers and sisters. And I have to tell you, God has raised me from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to be that teacher for black people. And you have to know it now. 